watch is going to be able to say they didn't have a chance to be heard. That's very true. Uh, are there, thank you, Lanny. Are there any other reports from board committees? Kathy? And just a reminder to those that we are, we are, we have a committee to name the building known as the Bison Building currently, but it will house the nutrition services and uh, professional learning uh, opportunities. And that, that window closes on the 1st of December, so if you have a suggestion, please get it into, I hope I've got the right date. December 1st is what I have in my notes, correct? Is it today? Well, then they have till midnight. <laughs> I just want to make sure we get them all in. Our meeting is scheduled for December 7th for the naming committee, and I want to make sure all of those names in. So if you're a day late, we probably won't kick you out. So get them in ASAP. So email suggestions to your favorite board member or go to the uh, page on the website for submissions. That is still open. Okay, I'm seeing a nod back there. Thank you for that reminder, Kathy. Uh, any other reports from board committees? All right, uh, Lanny, is there a report from the Career Academy? Uh, yes, Career Academy Joint Board met on the 9th. Uh, we began, as we are now, with a presentation from students and instructors, and these were from the Business Administration Pathway. Uh, so we had an opportunity to have a little discussion, and I asked the students you know, what they liked about the Career Academy as compared to their other educational experiences. And they liked the hands-on opportunities, the fact that the course offerings had more specific content relevant to their interests and that it was more doing and less talking. So it was good feedback. Uh, also reported at that meeting, the LPS and SEC facility staff are having quarterly meetings now to uh, deal with any facility issues that arise in the building. And we have the TCA signage now at the main entrance, uh, which makes that a little easier to find. Uh, so far this year, students have had over 75 uh, field trips or pathway excursions out into the community. And uh, of note, uh, our second year students at the end of this semester will be eligible to take the exam for the uh, CNA, their Certified Nursing uh, degree. Uh, enrollment is at 387 students, which includes 239 juniors, which is a really good sign for growing the program next year. In addition to LPS students, we also have nine CENCAP students, which includes students from Waverly and Norris. And as of the uh, ninth, we had 150 applicants for next year in comparison to 124 at this time last year. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Lanny. All right, that brings us to uh, the superintendent's update. Dr. Joel? <clears throat> I'm not sure what we did in the old days, but Mr. Boswell asked a question about the free and reduced percentage at Campbell. Mr. Neal didn't have the answer at his fingertips. He researched it. He texted me 66%. 66. So right, we don't you. have to worry about uh, forgetting to get back with you on that question. Thank you, Mr. Neal. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, a couple of things. One is, you know, speaking of CLCs, we have a, a board goal that we're going to be doing an extensive report uh, later on uh, in the spring, I believe, you know, just about CLCs and what a gift they are to our system and what an important role they play, not only in our, in our community, but also um, for our, our students in terms of having access to social and academic opportunities uh, before and after school. This is a big national discussion, and that can't be my phone, I don't think. No, it's the lawyers. Um, <laughs> it was the president. <laughs> the, this is a national conversation on, on community learning centers, expanded learning opportunities. I was in a meeting today where one of the things, no secret to anybody, we're, gonna, we're hitting some perilous financial times in Nebraska, and it's, we're going to have a couple of years that are going to be quite unlike the last three or four or five years, so there's been a lot of conversations taking place. How do we prepare for that? What does that look like? What are the investments that we ought to be prioritizing as a state? And, you know, we're talking about early childhood, we're talking about social and emotional um, supports, we're talking about career pathways. And there's, there's quite a bit of disequity around the state with regard to who's doing what and who's able to do what. So it's going to be a big challenge to look at it. But a comment that I made today at this meeting was, when, you, when a community has a full service community school, have the ability under that umbrella to be able to address all of those, including school to work, including social emotional, including early childhood if you wanted to, if we could get people to think about it that way. Um, because everybody ought to have access to that kind of an, uh, of an initiative in a program. 
But that's going to be a big debate topic going forward because, again, dollars are going to be very, very tight for the next couple of years. I think it's close to a billion dollar shortfall right now and seems to be growing. And, 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 you know, we just know when the legislative session starts, we're going to have our work cut out for us, but so is every other agency that relies on state aid. And then just to reiterate something that, um, that, that Don Mayhew said today downstairs at the, teacher, at the uh, uh, staff reception and Rita Bennett said so eloquently as well, too. We are really fortunate and blessed in Lincoln to have the caliber of people who, one, want to come here, and then two, stay here for a career. I mean, without question, it's where people driven enterprise, and it's a big part, the biggest part, of why we have the successes that we have. So I want to lend my voice to say thank you to, um, to all those people that we honor today, and there were several that couldn't make it, of course. So uh, that concludes my report. Questions for Dr. Joel? All right, that brings us to the monthly financial report. Are there any questions for staff? That was a great comeback. Seeing none, uh, that brings us to announcements of upcoming events for the board. Uh, November 23rd through the 25th, no school at all levels. November 24th and 25th, LPS is closed. Next week on November 30th, we have Face the Chamber with Governor Ricketts uh, for, at lunchtime at the Country Club. Uh, December 7th, we have the Chamber Coffee at the Chamber Office at 8 a.m. And then that takes us to our next board meeting on December 13th, uh, which starts with a work session at 4.30, followed by the regular meeting at 6. Uh, we are again at the point of the meeting where we would uh, welcome public comment. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board? Seeing none, there is a request from staff for closed session. Is there a motion, Connie? There is a motion for closed session for number two, real estate, number three, litigation, and number seven, legal advice. Lanny? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, Laura, would you please call the roll? Mr. Schulte? Yes. Ms. Beyer? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. Mrs. Danik? Yes. Mrs. Duncan? Yes. Ms. Mumgard? Yes. Mr. Mayhew? Yes. And with that, we will recess and move into closed session.